Hey, and welcome to the makeup lesson for the flutes for lesson number one. This is a clinic given by Libby Laufers, so we're going to listen to that, and then at the end I have an assignment for you to record and send to me. So here we go. This is Libby Laufers Masterclass. Hello. Should we start with me playing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, should I have you pick a number, Mr. Mr. Saunders? Sure. I'll pick a number because you are one and seventy eight. I said seventy eight variations. Five. Seven. Oh, Forty two. 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 Forty two.
Mozart. Who wrote Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? Mozart. Do you think that Mozart wrote all of those different variations? No. No, he did for flute, but he did for piano. Actually, the man who wrote all the variations of 78 variations of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star was someone who was born in Egypt. There's actually something I find interesting about music. You have a theme written by someone who was born in Vienna, right? Vienna, who wrote a lot of his music in Western Europe of a, and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star turned into a French folk song that then somebody in Egypt went and wrote a whole bunch of variations on. So we're talking way different parts of the world. Well, I noticed that all the variations that you played with it was playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star the first note of each kind of phrase and then they went down and then sent them back up or just went back up to the top. Yeah, and that's kind of the fun thing about music. We're playing with the same theme, but you can do whatever you want with it. When I was playing in the different registers of the flute, did it sound exactly the same or did it sound different? It kind of depended on the variation that I was playing. I think one of the cool things about flute is you can play a note to say A. And you can make it sound kind of brassy or kind of like an oboe. Or you can make it sound kind of soft. blowing on a water bottle. It's exactly the same. You can annoy your friends and parents yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by playing with the water bottle. So in this case, when I'm blowing across the water bottle, all that air is hitting the opposite end of the, of the opening, and air is going in and then it's vibrating on the inside. When we play on a flute, we want all of our air to hit this spot right here. It's called a tone wall. Um, if you hold the flute up, now everybody hold your flute up. I want you to sit nice and straight like somebody's measuring you. This is the other fun thing about flute. <laughs> Don't hit your neighbors. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> I want everybody to play an A. A natural. So it looks like this. <laughs> to your ear, does that sound as good? <laughs> no. No. I want you to take that same A. Hold on just a minute. Well, take that same A. Now put your elbow way out in front of your body. Does that sound as good? No. No. So how do we find that sweet spot again? Make sure your elbow's kind of in front of your body. So if you need to sit um, kind of at an angle on your chair, totally fine. And don't be afraid to move your chairs at all if you were a flute player. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you just a few seconds. I want you to play with that A on your own with your flute. What I want you to do before you start playing they want you to think about how can you get your air to go straight across, straight across the tone or the embouchure hole on your flute, which is this part right here, to hit that tone wall. And if you want, turn to your turn to a friend next to you, turn to your neighbor, and, and maybe they can help you see if you are in the middle of your instrument. So go ahead, give yourself just a few, just a few moments. <laughs> yeah. We should be good about it. <laughs> um, what happens 
We're going to go back to our same note. Now we've kind of figured out where we want the flute to be on our lip, and we kind of know that we need our elbow out in front of our body. What happens if we play with the keys rolled back like this? I'm going to play and watch the keys roll back and listen to what happens to the tone.
play.
writing music, we moved to something that's what we call now a uh, uh, Baroque nice. flute, or um, it was called a transverse flute. Um, sounds a little bit different. I mean, you heard me play a little bit on the recorder um, and a little bit on the piccolo. I'm going to go back and twinkle, twinkle, little star, see what it sounds like on the Baroque flute. to what we play on now. Um, and if you notice, my flute has one extra key on it than yours does. Um, what this means is I can play one lower note than your flutes can. Does anybody have a, fl a flute with a B flute on it? Can go lower than this? Yep. One, one tiny little note. What's so the highest? The highest. That's a good question. Um, I'm guessing that's the ledger wine C. That's an octave above the ledger wine C. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> Variations of Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> How did you choose to like play flute? Like, all the other instruments? 
My parents took me to orchestra concerts, and I liked that the flute was shiny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is why I picked yeah. the instrument. It is sparkly and shiny. It is. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so I like, I'm confused. Like, what are you supposed to do with this car? Do you open it and like, close it? Because like, I heard it. Like, the head joint? Yeah. Um, oh. If I push the head joint, do you have a tuner? Handy, Mr. Saunders? Do you have one that they can maybe see? Yeah, we'll put it up on the screen. We will demonstrate. I was going to use my phone. So getting back to the discussion where we talked about if um, if you have an instrument that has a lot of metal, or if it's long, it makes the pitch lower. If you have an instrument that's shorter, what does that do to the pitch? Higher. It makes it higher. So when we talk about tuning, if I push my head joint all the way in. <laughs> you have a sense of trombone. Singing tunes like a little star all day long. <laughs> you, get, you get flute points. Oops. tuning on Thursday, actually. Okay. Thanks, band rehearsal. Oh, no, okay. it's picking us up. Oh, that's great. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Do you have any oh, other wow. questions? Oh, wow. Questions or anything that I should have addressed. Before. I think this is great. I think I gotta let you guys go back. So, okay. yeah, can you give Libby a nice round of applause? Okay, so Mr. Songer back here with you. Here is what I need you to do to uh, get full credit for this lesson. I need you to take out your flutes, and if you are a sixth grader, I need you to open up your Accent on Achievement book to the back of the book, page 37. And if you are an eighth grader, your Green Standard of Excellence book to page 38. And the very first uh, etude there in the book is the B-flat major scale. And I'd like you to play and record yourself playing that B-flat scale and, and that whole first etude there. So go ahead and record yourself. And as far as recording, uh, any way you can do it. So you can use Audacity, GarageBand, uh, Smart Music. 
You can use your phone or another mobile device. You can come into school before or after school, and I can help you record it. And then you send that to me. Um, you can email it to me to songere, S-O-N-G-E-R-E, at district112.org. You can bring it in on a flash drive. You can bring your phone or, or iPod or iPad in and play it for me. Uh, whatever way is most convenient for you to get it to me. So there you go. Thanks for listening.